TNC Original African Stories. Listener discretion is advised as this podcast may contain violence or strong language. Previously on Ashoibi. But what is all this, Bami? Anita, I'm sorry. Two hours far. You know what? I can't process whatever excuse you are giving right now. Anyway, I can't be mad at you today. So, do you still think I should tell her? To be honest, this doesn't seem very smart, though. You're right. You're right. I won't say anything today. I'll just go straight to the reception. Okay. Just let me know how it goes. Hmm. Uh Uh-uh. No, Ashwabi. Are you fighting with the bride? I'm pregnant. What? You're pregnant. Are you sure? Of course you're sure. Oh my God, this is so huge. I'm so happy for you. Whose is it? Mo, uh, uh, the thing is, well... It's not Charles, is it? Mo, you're scaring me now, Anita. Whose is it? Whose baby is it? Jay. Jay? Wait, what do you mean, Jay? My Jay? Mo. What? Lying, desperate slut! I can't believe you! Let's start at the beginning. Okay, maybe not the very beginning, but let's take you a few months back. To the month of love. It's the day after Valentine's Day, and almost everyone seems to be, um, how do I say this? In love. <laughs> yes, deep inside love. Mrs. Moini Body Boy is no exception. You can tell from the way she sways her hair to her weightless gait. Hey, watch it. Sorry! Moini yelled out after the seemingly angry man she hit with her elbow as she rolled her grocery cart across the mall. The smile from her thoughts lodged at the corner of her lips made it difficult for her to notice the human traffic surrounding her. She was on a residual high from the night before. (laughs) Her left thumb stroked the ring on her fourth finger, drifting into another bout of daydreams. She slowed down. Mo! Mohini Lulu Briggs! Before she could recognize the excited, enviably chiseled face before her, the woman extended her long, toned arms and wrapped her in a tight hug. Oh my goodness, you look the same! Moini smiled enthusiastically, trying to remember why the woman looked very familiar. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit either. <laughs> Moini's eyes widened when she realized who she was talking to. Wow, Sherry! I take that back. You look different. So amazing, Lord. She could not stop the surprise from flowing out with her screams. Sherry Mogaji, QC's biggest. I mean, you know how it goes. Oh my God, it's a lie. And all the other phrases and exclamations women screech at each other and used to make a scene when they see that old friend. <laughs> They laughed continuously as they pulled away from the disapproving looks of every other passerby. Moini had her eyes fixed on Sherry as she rolled her shopping cart in front of her. She could not believe that the fit woman next to her was the big Sherry that she shared a room with in secondary school. Even I can't believe it. (laughs) I'm going to that fabric store over there. Come, let's go. What are you up to these days? You know now, hustling here and there. You know how it is. We have so much to catch up on, babe. I'm telling you. Moini's smile began to disappear as she ran her manicured thumb over one of the fabrics in the pile adjacent to them. Memories of the time when Sherry tried hard to prove that she was better than her started to creep back in. She wondered why Sherry was being evasive, though. You! Last I heard, you were not in the country, yes? Ah, yes. I graduated from Imperial. Chemical engineering. She called for one of the attendants with her eyes. Really? I studied chemical engineering too at Texas a and M. I'm with Shell now anyway. That's why I'm even here. I'm taking a couple of people to a business lunch. Moini continued to smile until her cheeks felt bruised. It felt like a huge cloud had rested over her and released buckets of rain on her mood. She could see Sherry's lips move and make words, but all she could hear in her mind was Shell. <laughs> Leave it to Sherry Mogaji to throw the one thing that she had craved in her face. So where do you work? She faintly heard Sherry ask. <clears throat> um, I... As she was about to reply, she noticed Sherry staring at her finger. Oh 
my God, babe, are you married? Sherry exclaimed after pulling her away from the shop attendant beside them. Moini forced a smile and nodded in confirmation. Sherry looked at her finger again and then back at her. That was when Moini saw the pity and gloat in her eyes. She started to say something, but Sherry interrupted her. I'm so sorry, babe. I have to be on my way now. She leaned in for a hug. We should do lunch sometime. She rushed out of the store with Moini's eyes staring at her back until it was lost in the crowd outside. How dare she? The buzz from her phone made her realize that she had been staring into the nothingness for a while. She blinked a few times to moisten her dry eyes before picking up her phone. So sorry again that I had to work today, sugar. How's grocery shopping going? Buy something I can eat off you, okay? I love you. She continued to stare at her phone screen as she absentmindedly walked out of the store and joined the crowd. How could she let one night of Valentine's romance stare her away from her big plan to obtain freedom? Six, six, six. Hmm. Uh, I don't want again, Seth. She clenched her teeth and selected a contact in her phone book. Placing the phone on her left ear and the cart before her, she walked briskly towards the exit door, ignoring the throbbing in her toe from hitting it against the edge of a wall. Hello? How are you? Tell Anita. Oh, of course, I mean Dr. Momo. Tell her that I'm cancelling the three o'clock appointment. At about the same time in another corner of Lagos, Dr. Anita Momo cannot seem to stop yelling. If I talk now, you people will say she has come again. Simple bio data is the only thing I have asked of this receptionist. Is it rocket science to document the patient's name, age, and sex? Do you need to be Napoleon Bonaparte to do that? Anita yells to nobody in particular. The receptionist, unlucky enough to be the scapegoat of today, had long run to take cover. It was common knowledge that when Dr. Anita got in her moods, the wise thing to do is to hide, else a stray bullet will hit you. <laughs> and trust me, you might not survive it. Are there any more patients? She asks her back to the nurses surrounding the white reception booth as she walked towards the white door of the laboratory. Any outstanding appointments? Because I need to leave this hospital. Um, doctor, there was a 3 p.m. appointment, but the patient, Mrs. Badebo, just called in to cancel. Anita paused and turned to her left to see the person that was bold enough to interrupt her. She smiled as her eyes rested on the dark-skinned owner of the thin voice. It was the new nurse. <laughs> No surprises there. How will she not cancel? Anyone can smell your incompetence from the other end of the phone. I'm going home. I hope the person on night duty knows what an emergency means. <laughs> Talk about touchy. Someone's oxygen mask is obviously preventing her from inhaling all the love in the air. Anita turned and changed course towards her brown office door, mumbling words the nurses could not catch. They really could not be bothered. They just wanted her out as soon as possible. They exchanged knowing looks, trying hard to stifle the laughter threatening to leave their mouths. They could hear the thoughts in each their minds. Still agitated from her outburst, Anita dropped into her orange leather orthopedic swivel chair, shut her eyes and... <sighs> she ignored it. It had to be Bami. Between the night before and now, he had left her more than 40 missed calls. She knew she could not stay mad at him for too long, but she needed to rid him of the foolishness that was beginning to resurface. She could hear his words from the night before. Don't you see we're so great together? Just give us a chance. I love you. Always have. Her subsiding anger began to rise again as she pictured him leaning in to steal a kiss the way he did last night. He was supposed to be the one person that understood her through and through. She could not imagine that he would misinterpret her taking him to dinner on a night that happened to be Valentine's night. She smiled faintly when she remembered how quick her palm reacted to his teenage-like behavior. She was not sorry. If that was what it took to get him in order, she would do it over and over. She pulled her arms out of the white lab coat and protected her beige suit and finally picked the phone off the table. She needed to talk to Moini anyway. The poor girl had probably developed cold feet. She hit the call button and activated the phone speaker. Hey, babe. She all but fell off her chair when she heard the familiar baritone on the other end of the call. Charles? She whispered, leaning forward with her elbows resting on her cushioned leather table. Um, you rang me, no? Her phone really did have a mind of its own. 
Did you get my message last night? The sweat threatening to drench her and her heart palpitations betrayed the disinterested frown she was trying to cover her face and disguise her voice with. I did. I didn't feel like coming over. I'll see you tonight. So, wear something nice. She opened her mouth to retort, but it stayed open in disbelief. She was already mentally setting her closet for something nice. Preferably that red share one you had on the last time. Don't stand me up, oh. She managed to say authoritatively before hanging up. Without thinking, she snatched her bag from the chair behind her and half ran towards the door. <laughs> that bastard. Bibs, are you up? Yeah, B. Sorry I didn't tell you I changed my mind about the thing. About that, why? Last night, you said you were so sure you wanted to start a family. What changed? Hmm. I saw Big Sherry today, oh. That my friend of me in QC. Eh, I remember her. The one you always reported to me, Abby. <laughs> Law, yup. Imagine, she works with Shell. Shell! She studied chemical engineering as well. I'm so pained, Anita. I made sure to sleep before Jay got back. I may have slapped him if he tried to have sex with me tonight. I can't do this much longer. I wasn't made to be a housewife, I beg. Nah, I have to get that job. Babes, I would preach, but you know what I'll say. Just do what you must. Me, I should sleep, oh. I need to be at the hospital by five. Charles just left. SMH, you're being winch. Then don't tie your pum pum join that one to two. Isn't this Charles that ignored your body call two nights ago? Charles that told you to come over and left you outside. You two the mumu for this man. LOL, rascals. Leave this child's matter. I'm going to bed. Night, night. Love you, boo. Is your brother here now? No. Seminary is just stealing him from me, small, small. He should be here sometime in March. Uh. Love you more, baby. Night. Anita reluctantly rolled her naked body off the maroon silk sheets and turned off the light switch on the wall opposite the bed. She contemplated walking downstairs to the kitchen to hit up the leftover Chinese meal in her fridge. After all, she was already on her feet and even though her stomach felt satisfied, her mouth was not. She looked down at her stomach and grabbed her fupa before slapping the inconspicuous flab and sucking her stomach in. As they say, suck but let me share it's fine. <laughs> she thought of the nasty jokes Charles had made about it and wondered why she still let him around her. She saw her phone screen light up and she climbed up the bed again and reached for the power button. The pop-up text message looked strange. And so she opened it as she dropped to her back and raised the phone up to her eyes. Lagos is small, I hope you know. I've heard your gist and I know your type very well. Stay away from my man or else. Thanks for listening to Ashray B, the podcast. Brought to you by The Naked Convos. Produced by 808 Extra. Theme song, Charles Onwubia, a.k.a. Beethoven. Narrated by Feifei. Voice actors, Jojo Aimeegbe as Dr. Anita. Onafori Kwale as Nurse. Shea Banks as Bami. Ifeoloa Oladipo as Charles. Jasper Tomomewo as Jayola. Eniola Keshiro as Moini. Onafori Kwale as Sherry. This podcast is available everywhere you listen to podcasts on. Don't forget to subscribe and share.